In this video, I want to provide an introduction to continuous probability distributions. So continuous probability distributions are used to represent variables which are measured on a continuous scale. So typically the sort of thing that we're talking about here is some sort of continuous measurement. And examples of that might be, let's say, the, the temperature of an individual's body also, you might use a continuous probability distribution to model the returns of a stock. Or, let's say, the length of time you have to wait for a taxi to appear. So, you can also represent time on a continuous scale and hence probability distributions, which are continuous in nature, are the thing to use. So, unlike discrete distributions, the values of the function which represents our continuous probability distribution are not interpretable as probabilities. And we're going to discuss why that's the case uh, in this particular video. Instead, what they represent are things that we call probability density. And probability densities are really just sort of measures of the concentration of probability over a particular interval. So what's the definition of a continuous probability distribution? Because it's slightly different to that of a discrete distribution. Well, firstly, we say that P of, let's say we're describing a random variable T, which is now a continuous random variable, has got to be greater than or equal to zero. So P here is what is known as our sort of probability density function. And t here, as I said, is some continuous random variable. So that condition is pretty similar to what we had in the discrete case. Then what we require is that because we're dealing with a continuous density, we use the analog of summing for a continuous variable, which is integrating. So we integrate over all potential space from minus infinity to plus infinity has to be equal to 1. And note that here I've used minus infinity and plus infinity because those are the sort of limits of a real number. But in practice, you may be dealing with variables which are bounded. For example, the weight of an individual must be non-negative, which would mean that what we'd do is we'd replace the minus infinity by 0. So what's an example of a continuous probability distribution? So let's imagine that what we're doing here is we're measuring the temperature of a particular sea. And we imagine that the sea can be anywhere in temperature between, let's say, 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. And we imagine that all values between those two bounds are equally likely. So we have the sort of distribution that I've shown here, which is known as a uniform distribution. So what is the y-axis here? Well, the y-axis here is our density, p of t. So can we use this density to allow us to determine, let's say, the probability that the temperature is exactly 20 degrees centigrade? Or put another way, is the probability that the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade just given by the height of the orange line here on the y-axis? Well, before we sort of jump to any conclusions about that, what about the temperature 20 point one degrees centigrade or furthermore the temperature 20.01 degrees centigrade or going even further 20.00000 many times and then one degree centigrade surely we can reason there are an infinite number of temperatures that are pretty close to 20 degrees centigrade because there are an infinite number of these values the probability of any individual one of these values being the exactly the temperature of the sea is zero. So what we have here is that the probability of 20 degrees centigrade is equal to zero. But hang on, that's not the height which we had over here. In fact, the height over here is 1 over 20. The height is 1 over 20 here to ensure that the integral of p of t is equal to 1, because 1 over 20 times 20 is equal to one, and that's just the same as working out the area under this particular curve here. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the probability density, this one over 20, is not the same as the probability, which we've reasoned here is zero. So in the continuous case, how actually can we work out probabilities? Well, the idea is that what we do is instead of 
working out the probability for any one individual value being exactly true, what we do is we work out probabilities for sets. So let's say we want to work out the probability that the temperature of our sea is greater than, let's say, 15 degrees centigrade and less than 20 degrees centigrade. So how do we actually work out this probability here? Well, it's fairly simple. All we do is we work out the sort of 15 point on our bottom axis here and then the 20 point, and then we draw lines from the bottom axis up to our line, or vertical lines up to our probability distribution function. And then all we do is we work out the area underneath that particular sort of those two points on the curve. So here, just because that's a rectangular region, that will be equal to, well, one over 20, which is our, our height of our line, times the sort of x distance, the horizontal distance, which is just five, which is just one over four. So just so we've got it sort of mathematically written down, the way we work out the probability of a particular set is we integrate between the bounds of that set our probability distribution function with respect to the variable. And so we can see using this sort of integral interpretation of working out the probability of sets that as our sets shrink to the limit where we've just got one value like we did here when we just considered, let's say, just 20, that the probability of that particular set is going to be equal to zero because the area underneath the curve at 20 is zero. There's just one line. So to summarize, continuous probability distributions are used to describe variables about which we're uncertain that are measured on some continuous scale. And the important thing to remember about continuous probability distributions is that the values of the probability distribution function are not interpretable as probabilities. Indeed, what we can interpret them as is probability densities. And probability densities essentially tell us the concentration of probability along a particular unit of length of our variable. So I'm using sort of length here to describe, uh, not to actually describe a physical length, but a length in our variable. So let's say we were talking about temperature here, then I would be talking about a unit in degree centigrade. The definition of a continuous probability distribution is similar to that of a discrete distribution in that the, the function's values must be greater than or equal to zero, and we require that the integral of our probability distribution function is equal to one when we integrate across all possible values of our variable. Finally, we reason that to work out the probability of a particular set, what we need to do is we need to integrate the probability distribution between the sort of upper and lower bounds of that set which we're considering.